Coming up next, I'm going to tell you how to inflation-proof your career goals and then tell you who the most boring person in the world of work is and why you shouldn't smack the you-know-what out of people on an award show and your calls. <laughs> it's rare that a show open makes me laugh, but today's show is so full, I'm calling it a cornucopia of goodness. It's just spilling out. We have so much to get to today. And don't forget, later in the program, we're going to talk about confrontation in the workplace in the context of Will Smith smacking the you-know-what out of Chris Rock last night. What? That's later. There's actually going to be some really good practical content. So you don't want to miss that. But first, inflation is growing. It is taking off. Inflation is heating up, heating up, heating up. And the reason that we've got to talk about this today is because some of you have leveled up in your job. We've got 30 million Americans have changed their jobs in the last seven months, and they're all getting paid more. But that paycheck doesn't stretch as far as it used to. I mean, six months ago. Let's practically dive right into this. We've got a graphic here uh, that for our viewing audience, you'll be able to see. Uh, Let's throw that up on the screen. This is the percentage change in the average cost of gas and rent compared to hourly earnings. Look at that. If you just look at the numbers there, from February 2021 to February 2022, hourly earnings have gone up. And again, for our viewing audience, uh, listening audience, you can't see this, but rent has skyrocketed. And then you look at gas, and you know what's not represented on this graph? Groceries. I've been saying this. You want to know where the American people are being squeezed financially? It's gas and groceries, baby. Because you think about it, it's a lot easier to budget for your rent, uh, your mortgage, but you talk about gas and groceries, that can be a fluctuating number based on activity, right? And if you're like me, and I'd like everybody to say a prayer for Stacey and I, we have uh, two teenage boys, and uh, we're going to take them to the doctor because we're convinced they've got ringworm. Uh, They're just, I'm kidding, it's just a joke. They're eating so much. I mean, the, the boy, the control booth, boy, they just, you ate that one right up. The boys don't have ringworm. It was a joke about the fact that they can't eat enough. And by the way, when you, and just a warning to parents, that when you have teenage boys, you'll go to bed at night with the kitchen clean. This is a big thing for me. I need the kitchen to be clean. And so I clean the kitchen every night. It's one of the ways I can bless my wife. I get big husband points for this. But you wake up the next morning and there's plates and crumbs everywhere. Well, this is what happens when you have teenage boys. They wake up all hours of the night. They're hungry. What's going on? We cooked an entire meal while I was asleep. What happened? Anyway, I digress. Gas and groceries, uh, rent, everything's going up. Inflation is biting those bigger paychecks and sometimes swallowing the bigger paychecks whole. So, I'm, I'm making a point here that inflation is obviously very real, but let me tell you where inflation is infect, is affecting you. For those of you who want to grow in your career, hey, Ken, I, it's a squeeze now. I, getting qualified or getting additional qualifications or additional skills, man, it, it's, it's hurting me in the pocketbook. I get it. So the theory here is, for a lot of people, and I'm seeing it all over social media, it's why we decided to address it. How do you inflation-proof your personal growth, your professional growth? You watch the show, you listen to the show because you want to grow. That's the commonality for everybody who engages in this program. I want you to make more money and experience more meaning. How do you do that? we got to be growing. So how do you grow when it costs money? Well, it doesn't always have to cost money. So with U.S. wages increasing but costs soaring, it's basically a net-net. So, Ken, I want to grow, but I don't have a lot of money I can put in the personal professional growth bucket. Be encouraged. There are five specific areas, I'm going to call these buckets, where even when the money's stretching a long way, when, when money's better, you don't have to spend any money to grow in these areas. Number one. Free tutorials. I'm I'm calling this a bucket 
But if you look at YouTube alone, I can't remember how many times I've had a uh, aspiring photographer call this program and say, kid, I don't know how to get started, man. It costs so much to get a camera, and, 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 and I don't have the money to go to photography school. And I just said, go to YouTube. YouTube has got tutorials that are free, obviously, on just about everything. I mean, I could type in left-handed puppetry, and I'll bet you there's a one video on left-handed puppetry. It's possible. But I know this. If you want to be a photographer and make money on the side, I'm going to tell you right now, go to YouTube and start studying. There are all kinds of really high quality, free tutorials from equipment to lighting to styles to whatever. I just, you know, I've become an amateur uh, cook on my Kamado Joe, which is a big competitor to Green Egg. Do you know why I'm good on the Kamado Joe? Because I watch YouTube videos. I Joe, listen to me. I could smoke some wings right now and knock your socks off. Make you want to slap your grandmother. They're so good. How? Because I watch YouTube videos. All right, free tutorials. Number two, job shadowing. Do you know that this is an actual thing if you just ask somebody? I got a friend who's a really great accountant. I think I want to get into accounting, but I'm not sure. Ask them if you can shadow them. They're an accountant. They probably want the excitement in their day anyway. More on that later. So go shadow them. Learn something for free. Here's another one. Internships. I got an internship early on. I was running my own small business working for me. And when I was getting into sports broadcasting or broadcasting in general, I was like, is sports broadcasting the avenue for me? So I went and interned for free at a local sports talk radio station. It was great. I learned incredible things that I still use today on this program. Books. Lord have mercy. Our culture doesn't read anymore. But the good news is audiobooks are huge. I sold more audio. I sold three times the amount of audiobooks last month of my new best selling book from Paycheck to Purpose than I did hardcover. I don't care. I listen, Mama needs a new pair of shoes. I don't care what format of the book you buy. I I read it to you. I'll read to you. People are listening to books in the car. So audiobooks. Books. By the way, a lot of these books are free at the library. My books are at the library. Uh, you could get a used paperback of some classic book for probably less than four bucks right now on Amazon. And then podcasts. How about podcasts, webinars, anything in that digital online webinar, seminar, podcast, you're going to learn and grow for next to nothing. For next to nothing. It does not cost what you think it costs to actually add some knowledge and wisdom which you can apply personally and professionally. By the way, I've been talking from a professional standpoint, but hey, you want to get better in your marriage, your parenting, your nutrition, your exercise? All that doesn't have to cost you much at all. So coming up next, uh, this is your mantra. I'm going to share a mantra for those of you right now that need to learn, that need to grow, but do it for less. That's coming up. Are you wondering if you should leave your current job or stay put? Well, you're not alone. That's why we created the Should I Quit My Job quiz. In just five minutes or less, this quiz will help you determine if you're at the right company and if you're in the right role. And if you need to make a move, you'll get practical steps to keep you moving forward. Folks, it's time to get unstuck. Life is too short not to do what you were created to do. Go take the quiz right now at kencoleman.com slash quiz. All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Okay, we let off with how to inflation-proof your career goals, your career growth. And I told you that when we came back, I'm going to give you a very simple mantra or theme, if you will, that I think will help you begin to see opportunities to grow for nothing, for no dollars. I'm talking not a nickel. 
here's the theme. You ready? It doesn't cost you a dime, but it will cost you time. It doesn't cost you a dime, but it will cost you time. The reason I'm giving you that mantra is because here's what I think you need to understand. Some of you are being held back because you're making an excuse that you have to spend money that you don't have or money that you don't want to allocate to grow. And the reality is that's an excuse for you not putting in the time. Because everything in that last segment that I just gave you is going to cost you time. See, here's what I know about the human uh, condition. We all want stuff. We all want everything good, but we don't want to put in the time and effort to get it. We just don't. Oh, it's hard work. It's going to take some time. Well, now we're not so excited. But if I say, hey, do you want this? Yeah, I want it. You ever seen people stand up at these ball games for a free T-shirt? It's the greatest social experiment I've ever seen in this world, right? It's a T-shirt that's not going to fit you. It's ugly, and it's got a bunch of sponsors' names on it. So unless you're using it to cut the grass or you are a redneck, you're not going to wear it. I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. But watch what happens when the cheerleaders come out or the whatever, and everybody stands up, acting like a complete maniac, diving over somebody to get a stinking awful t-shirt why because we just want something for nothing well i just told you how to get it for free financially but you're still gonna have to put some time in and effort to dig and to glean and then to apply so there you go all right uh boy we got something fun to get to don't forget later in the program i'm gonna cover the craziest moment on live television that I've ever seen in my life. Last night's Oscars, what can we learn about inter-office confrontation from Will Smith slapping the you-know-what out of Chris Rock. I'm going to unpack that a little bit later in the show. You do not want to miss that. Nobody else is going to break that scenario down like I am and give you something practical. If for some reason you haven't seen it, go to YouTube. Oh, my gosh. I watched it 271 times last night because uh, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. So we'll get to that. But first, it's time for In the News. All right, here we go. The audience already on the YouTube chat room is asking for the paper crinkling. So here we go. In my hands, today's article Uh from Study Finds. Uh, it's a website that puts out all these studies. The most boring person in the world has now been actually identified by scientists. Boy, this is gonna this is gonna offend somebody because we live in the most offensive, sensitive time in the world, and I don't care because this is funny. Number one. Number two, it's database, so get over yourself. Here we go. New study examining the science of boredom is ranked jobs, characteristics, and hobbies that people consider dullest in society. Now, I'm not going to focus on the hobbies and the interests. I'm going to focus on the work. All right? So, uh, bad news for you data analysts and accountants because you top the list <laughs> of the most boring people in the world. I'm sorry. There's a lady shaking her. Are you a data analyst or an accountant? Are you an accountant? Okay, I'm so glad she's watching live. This is great uh, because, hang on, this is what a study said, but I, I'm going to come back to that. I'm glad you shook your head. No, I'm not boring. Which, by the way, she doesn't look boring. She's very relaxed on the couch out there. She's got a pink hoodie on. She doesn't strike me as an accountant. So more on her in a moment. Uh, the University of Essex. Um they uh, surveyed uh, more than 500 people across uh, Europe, and uh, so that's the source of the study. Okay, so here's what's interesting. The study also found that a surprising misconception, uh, that there is a surprising misconception about so-called boring people. And you know what they think? That boring people are less competent in their jobs. Yeah. Now, hang on. I'm going to... I'm going to unpack all of this, but this is fascinating. There's some personal growth I'm going to share because people think that if you're boring, you're less competent. That's a problem for you boring people out there. I'm going to help you be less boring in a moment. I'm a man of the people. I'm going to help everybody. I got some content for you on that. 
Uh, no, you know what? Let me go ahead and unpack it now. Why tease it? Here it is. If your personality is not jumping off of the you know the map every time you walk in, that doesn't necessarily make you boring. So uh, let's be clear here. But if you are quiet, and if you are uh, an introvert, and uh, you just don't engage much, you could unintentionally get the label of boring. Now, do you have to change your personality to be like me, an extreme extrovert? No, you do not. Um, and you don't need to, uh, you know, change everything about who you are, but you need to be aware that when you don't engage and when you are an introvert and you tend to be quiet, because introvert speaks to, do you get energy from people or, or do you get energy being alone? And then if you're a quiet personality type, which I'm not, uh, you tend to get, you're not noticed as much. And so when you come to people's consciousness, you could be perceived as boring. So two quick things here. You have to change who you are. However, you need to be aware and you need to be interesting. And you're going, oh, great, Ken. You just Being interesting does not mean you have to be loud and extroverted. So let me give you a little tip how you can be interesting at the office. Be interested in others. Introverts, that's one-to-one. -one. Stay in your lane. Stay in your natural. That's a great place. But if you're quiet or shy or lack confidence, stay in your introvert lane, but be interested in people. And here's what I know. If you ask questions to other people about them and their lives, it's less attention on you. And by being interested in them, they will find you, watch, they'll find you to be interesting. I just set a bunch of people free right there. This does not mean you got to walk in and tell jokes every Monday morning. But engage by being interested in others, and guess what happens? They play tennis with you. You ask about their life, then they go, well, tell me about your life. And you share a couple of things, and all of a sudden, you're interesting, because you are. All right, let's keep going. By the way... I'm not patting myself on the back, but I'm going to tell you something. That content right there is going to set a lot of you free if you do it. Because I'm going to tell you something. If people think that you're boring, they think that you're not competent. This is not my opinion. This is what the data says. And this could be holding some of you back. Some of your leaders might go, well, you know, Fred's a nice guy, but he's kind of boring. And I'm not sure Fred's a rock star. <gasps> it's totally wrong. But we have to deal with perceptions. The old phrase, perception is reality, is a thing. So don't miss what I'm saying. I'm not saying you're boring, and I'm not saying you're incompetent. But if people think you're boring, they probably think you're incompetent, and you are holding yourself back. And I just gave you a breakthrough on how to not be boring. All right. What are the top five most boring jobs? This is fun. There we go. For people who like when I crinkle the paper. They've created a monster, by the way. Uh, they're now openly asking for it, and Joe is now on um, high blood pressure medicine. Uh, here it is, top five most boring jobs, data analysis. Number two, accounting. Number three, tax and insurance. Number four, cleaning. And number five, banking. Now, I'm going to break this down for my friend out in the lobby. This is just what people think. Do you know why they think this? Because it's very structured. It's, there's a, there's not a whole lot of feedback and interaction with that. It's kind of like, well, here's the deal is what they do. There's a lot of uniformity and not a lot of variation, except for when you start doing taxes for somebody who's an entrepreneur and then there's all kinds of interesting stuff going on. So here's the deal. Uh, be aware if you're in that kind of role and be interesting. Coming up next, more of the show. According to Glassdoor, the average job offer attracts over 250 applicants. So if you've made it to the interview, you've already made a great impression. So now is your time to showcase how you are the best choice for this role. That's why we created How to Win the Interview. This free guide will walk you through the five strategies to help you stand out amongst the competition. With just a little intentionality, you can prepare yourself to win the interview. To get it, go to kencoleman.com slash interview.
All right, folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. Okay, so I always enjoy going over to the YouTube chat room for real-time reaction. All right, these are people who watch YouTube live. And uh, just two quick call-outs, then to the phones. Uh, Data Worker is one of the usernames. And uh, they wrote, I'm boring and okay with it. Great. Fantastic. And then uh, Milka Ortiz said, I'm weird and goofy and I'm okay with it. So fantastic. Both spectrums there. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, that's fun. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, maybe we'll get to the chat room in a little bit later. Let's get back to the phones or to the phones uh, for our first time today. Don't forget, by the way, if you're watching and listening, you don't you don't want to miss our last segment of the show. Why you shouldn't smack the you know what out of people at work because some of you want to, and I understand. Uh, you know we're just gonna break it down, uh, and so you don't want to miss this. All right, uh, Jennifer is joining us in Fairhaven, Massachusetts. Jennifer, you're on the Ken Coleman show. Thank you so much, Ken, for taking my call. I'm a little nervous. Okay. Um, You're doing great. I work, I work a weekend shift, which has been for the last uh, 14 years, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 12-hour days. Okay. And um, I, I knew I was getting laid off in October. Um, I did get two job offers uh, last year in November, but if I took those job offers, I was going to lose my 12 weeks of severance. So I decided to wait until I had no job. And um, as of yesterday was my last day. Okay. So I do homeschool my children. So I think I should continue working a weekend shift. But I'm just kind of out of sorts right now. Like what my next steps should be. I don't know if I should take some time off and just kind of enjoy weekends off for a little bit. Can you take time off financially? Do you? Are you a second income in your home? Um, I'm actually divorced, but um, I, I I have like no bills. My car is paid for, my home is paid for, so I'm, I think I do better than others, thank you, God. So I'm, I think I'm at a really good spot. I, so, I could you, so you could go a month, two months, three months, four months without working? I, I probably could, but I think that would might, like four months, would, I think would be too long for me. I think I'd get nervous about that. All right, that. so there's your answer. <laughs> you, no, seriously, I just asked you questions and you answered it yourself. So right. let's back off. Let's be super careful. And okay. just for conversation, we're saying three months would be the most. Probably. Yeah. Because I understand through your divorce, you don't have any bills, but you got to have some spending money, right? Or is your spending money covered in the alimony and the, uh, uh, um, usually my, I, I don't have alimony, but, um, the child support just goes for my children. So it's all their activities. But because I've worked the weekend shift, like they've never done sports or anything because I'm usually working. And my ex works weekends. He works two weekends as well. Okay. Two weekends a month. So let me ask so, you this. Homeschool schedule looks like what? Because you brought it up. And so I want to explore this because I think you're usually, limiting yourself. What's the school yeah. schedule? Monday through Thursday. No, I get that. But what, I mean, I know it's Monday, Thursday, Monday, Friday, but what's the day look like? What, what's your, what's the operation? Um, like the kids start studying and then they're done. What's that? Um, pro we probably start around nine, 10 and end around three on most days. Wow. You need to yeah. relax, mom. I got to tell you, I have a bunch of friends that, uh, <laughs> no, I'm serious right now. I'm being very serious. Well, I'm gonna tell you why. I don't believe that kids ought to be in school for six hours anywhere. Well, well, we'll like, we, we do like, we'll make breakfast. Like today we made breakfast together and then they have music class on Wednesdays. So we do do co-ops so it just depends on the day okay here's my point i'm, I'm yeah. not trying to make this about homeschool schedule but i believe no. that you ought to think about um streamlining those days um and i'm gonna make one other point on this and move on but i've been talking to school teachers as a part of my real conviction on this show that our education system is broken here in america and one of the things i talked to these teachers about and they told me is that if they could wave a magic wand they would have kids learning for no more than two to two and a half hours a day. And they kids right. need to play. So as a homeschool right. teacher, mom, you can do that. And here's where I'm going with this. Right. Uh, I understand it's a childcare issue, but instead of you working weekends, I'd like to see you maybe look for some remote work where you're there in the home with the kids. 
Yeah, that was going to be one of my questions, actually. So that's funny that you brought it up because I'm like, I don't know if I should do remote work. Yes, you should. The it's the year. like where there's more remote work that's yeah. that's available in the United States than has ever been in the history of our country. If I'm you, I'm going to go and I'm just making this up for example purposes. Don't take me very literally here, but I'm going, all right, school starts at 830. This kids need to be up and rolling, baby. Let's go. 830 start. We're done by 11.30. I'm making this up. You do what you want to. And then you work from 12 to 5, 12, you know, or 12 to 4, and you're getting four hours a day. That's really good money more than, I mean, that's more the hours than you're getting in a weekend, and you still got your weekends. Kids can play sports, or they can try well, dance recitals or whatever. Right. See, we, we, I was remote for the last two years, and I think me being remote was partially why we lost our jobs. Because we got outsourced. Well, I get we that, but but but, but yeah, I get that, but that's a blanket statement. There's a whole right. lot of, of remote work that's not going to get outsourced. You just got right. laid off from your weekend job, so that would be like saying, "Well, I can't do weekend work anymore because my last weekend job I got laid off." I mean, these are all very specific situations, and we don't. It, it doesn't mean that we don't have that. If it's me. I, I'm looking for remote work in your area of talent. You're not. You didn't call me for a passion dream job idea. You called me for what's a basically a part time job that will allow me to still be homeschool mom and take care of the kiddos. Right. Correct. Right. And I know one of the jobs I interviewed with in November was a per diem job. Okay. So, so here's the deal. What do you do best? Just, just break this down for me very quickly. Don't overthink this. What talents are you bringing to companies that might need a remote worker? What do you do best? Are you administrative in nature, creative in nature? You get where I'm going? I think my people skills. Okay, great. So great at customer service, sales, right. whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah? Right, right. That's, yes. the, that's where I'm going. Right. I'm going, I got, I got part-time, I need part-time, and I need remote. Customer service, some type of sales or support where I'm dealing with people and you know exactly what you want, what you're looking for, go look for that. Because that allows you to be homeschool mom and have your weekends, which is ideal, correct? Um, I, not so much about the weekends. Okay, but I'm, my point is if you want to work on the weekends, then go work on the weekends. But you asked me, right. what do I do? But if you let off with, well, I want to take some time off to have my weekends back. You have to listen to yourself. Yeah. What's yeah. ideal? Is it working part-time on the weekends, 15 hours, 20 hours on the weekend, or is it working 20 to 25 hours during the week? You have to answer that question. I cannot answer that for you. Right. I know I was looking at hybrid too. Well, fine. But then you yeah. got childcare. Right. Right. So I'm. my point is do what you want to do, but you're saying, Ken, where do I look? Well, you're going to look to an area of talent. We're not looking at a dream job where I teach talent plus passion plus mission, meaning you use what you do best talent to do work you love passion to produce results that matter to you mission. That's sweet spot dream job stuff. That's not what you're looking for. You want to focus right. on talent alone because somebody needs you, Jennifer, and what you can do well. So who's offering that? And you decide. Remote, hybrid, weekend, weekday. That's your call, not mine. Okay. okay. But if you were my wife and we'd be sitting down at the kitchen table talking through those practical things I just hit you with, what's best for the right. kids through homeschool, plus you, plus the amount of money we want to make, we're going to look at all three of those categories and we simplify and we go, what's best? Let's start with ideal. It's amazing to me, and I'm not saying that, Jennifer, you're doing this, but I am saying there's a human condition to where we tend to just kind of go... Oh, you know, what's uh, you know, just kind of, you know, I'm not going to get two out of three. Uh, let me try to get one out of three. Wait a second. Why don't we start with the ideal desired future? Why don't we start there? Well, what would be best for the kids? What would be best for me? What would be best for my pocketbook? Oh, okay. Let's try to find that. Then we could always, but don't start out at <laughs> guys. The person who aims for nothing hits it every time. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Do you know what you were born to do? 
In order to get hired at a job you love, you need to get clear on your talent, passion, and mission. That's why our team created the Career Clarity Guide. In just a few minutes, this free tool will walk you through a process to discover what you do best, talent, the work you love to do, passion, and the results you want your work to produce. That's mission. Then you're going to feel way more confident throughout the job search process. To get started, go now to kencolman.com slash clarity. All right, folks, welcome back to The Ken Coleman Show, where we help you win at work and in life. I want you making more money while you experience more meaning. In other words, greater income, greater impact in the same gig. That's possible. It's actually possible to get up with some juice on Monday morning. It's actually possible to look up on Friday afternoon and go, dang, I can't believe the week's just almost done. Some of you are going, oh, Ken, you're just saying, no, that's my week. Every Friday afternoon, I look up and I go, holy crap, time's moving by so fast. Now, that's a sign. That's a sign that you are engaged. That's all it is. It's it, it's it's a sign that you're engaged. Same thing with parents. I got 16 uh, 14 and 13 at home. Kiddos. Stacey and I, and it's obnoxious. Kids are tired, are tired of us saying it. I've turned in my mom and dad. We've turned into our parents going, can't believe how quick the kids are growing. It's all we talk about when we see other parents. Man, time flies. We just sit around like in a, kind of like this sad state of where are our kids' lives going? Any parent that's listening and watching right now is saying, you're right. Why? Because we're engaged in our kids' lives. Fully, all in, baby. And it just goes like that. Boom. Where's it go? How's it go so fast? Because we're engaged. We're not sitting around watching paint dry. We're living. And when we're when we're working and not sitting around looking at the clock or refreshing Facebook or Instagram, you'd be surprised how fast the day goes. Anyway, there we go. Let's get to the phones. Uh, Jacob in Ankeny. Iowa? Is that right? Did I say that right, Ankeny? Oh, it's very exciting. Uh, Jacob, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken, how are you? I'm living the dream, Jacob. What are you doing? Just working away at my J-O-B. Uh-oh. Uh, just want to say a, Uh-oh. Yeah, uh huh. just want to say a quick thanks. Um, I called about a month ago, so you said Ankeny right. You said it right both times, so congratulations. Thank um, you. I'm hooked on phonics. I'd like everybody to know that. <laughs> Called about a month ago, asked about how long should I wait to reach out to a really good interview I had. Um, he gave me advice. I reached out to him. It's been almost two months. I haven't heard anything okay. from them at all. all so right, listen I'm to pretty me. sure. I'd- I'm, yeah, it's time for you to move on. They're just not that into you. There's a rom-com yeah. like uh, he's not that into you or she's not that into you. This is This is the girl you called in high school who keeps coming up with an excuse why she can't go out with you. They're not into you, man. Move on. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I didn't get that job. Yeah. Um, ended, <laughs> up getting, <laughs> ended up getting your book, uh, Paycheck to Purpose. Oh, good. Just started getting into that. Okay, great. Um, last week, I was listening to all your episodes. I binged them while I'm at work, and you were talking about burnout, dead-end jobs, and everything that you said in those two episodes resonated with me. Uh, I make decent money, but I honestly am just, I'm getting burnt out. And so my question is, I think I know what I want to do. So should I take a slightly lower paying full-time job in a company or in an area that I think I want to go? And then if you, if that's the only way, if that's the only way to get in, um, or it's the only way right now, and you don't feel like it's healthy to wait any longer then absolutely. Yes. Assuming that you can budget for the dip and assuming that the dip is temporary. Understand? Okay. Gotcha. So if you got to get the side job to make up for the financial hit, that's good too. But um, I'm not a fan of someone taking a sizable cut because the, the, the assumption is that it's the only job that you'll love. 
And that's mm-hmm. that, that's a lie from the pit of hell. I mean, I, I teach talent, passion, mission, the sweet spot, so that people can see multiple opportunities. It's like it's like the girl breaking up with you in high school or college, and it's like you walk around going, "That's it, I'm never gonna get married." Well, that's garbage too. It's not the only person that you can love or that will love you. And so I don't want you to make a bad financial decision. So let me review for you and other people that are in the same situation situation, uh, situation that are watching and listening today. If you can budget and absorb a small pay cut that is temporary, meaning six months in, or so you're going to make it back or a year at most and we can absorb that financially then I'm fine with that and if we need to get the side hustle to the, take no hit at all or maybe a slight bump I'm all in those are the other only ways I'm cool with it if not be patient look for something else You were created to fill a unique role in and through your work. Now, some of you may be going, I have no idea what that is. Some of you may be saying, I know what I want to do, but I don't know how to get there. I felt all of those emotions. I've been where you are, and I can tell you, there's hope. That's why I wrote the book, From Paycheck to Purpose. You can make the income you want and the impact that you desire, and I know that you have what it takes. Hey folks, welcome back to the Ken Coleman Show. There's a lot of buzz out there all over the internet about Phil, this guy. Phil, everybody loves Phil from ZipRecruiter. Thank you, Phil. Thanks for this. Anthony says, Phil, you sent me jobs I was a great match for, and I knew it was going to work out, and it did. That Phil sounds like someone you want in your corner, especially for an easier, more effective job search. What job will Phil help you discover? Go to ZipRecruiter.com. ZipRecruiter.com. By the way, the reason I endorse ZipRecruiter is because they're the most effective hiring site in the United States, the data shows. And number two, it's free to you. It doesn't cost you a dime. Companies are paying ZipRecruiter. And so we want great talent going to ZipRecruiter because they'll help you get a great gig or at least narrow it down. So go ZipRecruiter.com. Uh, all right. Don't miss this. I, I, I'm going to get to the phones. John is standing by. And then I'm going to unpack why you shouldn't smack the you-know-what out of people that are difficult at work or in the job. What Will Smith should have done, if you will. I'll break it down very practically to help you with difficult people. We'll have a little fun with what was the most salacious, most outrageous moment I've ever seen in my life on television. I would have paid a large sum of money to have been in that room with a bucket of popcorn. Uh, In fact, this could be the new format of the Oscars. It would drive ratings through the roof celebrity grudge match right there on the stage let them slap each other for entertainment be fantastic the new modern gladiators if you will i kid that's not the content john is up in houston texas john you're on the ken coleman show hey ken good afternoon how are you i'm living the dream sir how can i help so recently about six months ago i switched careers completely uh, I went from one field to a completely different field. I was in law enforcement. Um, I do have a degree, so I was able to to use utilize having the degree along with a lot of the other soft skills that I've I've learned throughout um, throughout my eleven years in law enforcement. And I, I switched careers. Um, I've now kind of faced myself to where I've kind of have I guess you should say buyer's remorse from where I'm at. Um, I had the opportunity. All right. I, I use your proximity principle, which actually, I guess, in a way worked a little too well because I was offered two different jobs and the one that I that I took versus the other one. Um, I guess you should say I'm having the buyer's remorse now and um, wanting to know if uh, if it's possible that I could consider or the, or the way to go about switching or is it too too early to, to switch right now? Did I jump the gun too fast? I wanted to switch. It's only been six months since I've been in it. I mean, is it very obvious that the things that you are unhappy with aren't going to change? That absolutely. It, it's it's more the red flags within the culture of the uh, of the the company that I'm working for now. What are the red um, flags? Give me the really short, specific version. Go. Not being paid on time. One. Ooh, oh boy. Um, 
um, just the overall, um, let's just say there's, there's been several instances where people have been doing dishonest things, things stealing time, but okay, yet they're not reprimanded for it. Yeah, no, it's not too soon to leave, number one, because this is a super hot job economy, right? And so what you do is you don't throw these people under the bus, but if people ask you, why are you leaving? You go, I'll tell you. Multiple times right. I haven't been paid on time. That's a massive red flag. That that just speaks to a whole lot of issues that I'm not even aware of, but that's that's pretty much a biggie. And then number right. two, there's some dishonest stuff going on, and you take the incompetent and the um, lack of integrity stuff. It's just red flag. I didn't want to be part of it. So, no, it's not too yeah. soon to leave. I actually, last week, I had actually had an interview with a uh, with a different company that the day after the, uh, the the hiring manager that I spoke with, he he had called and told me that he didn't he was interested in wanting to offer me a job, and, and that this week they would they would be sending me out a uh, um, uh, an email right. uh, with a job offer. Right. And, and so, being being with being in one job for the past eleven years, and also just with one one entity for the last 11 years, you know, and then moving out to the private sector like I have, it, it's been a big culture shock, but I, I, but I know what I want within, Good. uh, within my second career. Cause, cause I, I basically want to say, you know, can I do this for the next 20 years? Can I be here dealing with, you know, these issues or these problems for the next 20 years? And, and, it, and at six months, you know, no. like it, 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 no. it's almost a bad relief. No, you don't need my permission. I've already told you it's time to move on. And uh, right. your 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 gut is right. It's not going to work out there. Don't feel bad. But now let's focus on. Let's not just take the necessarily the first thing that comes along. It's got to be the right thing, not the next thing. You feel me? Correct. Correct. Like we're not. It's not so bad that we got to hit eject. That would be my only caution. Make sure it's the right thing. And and here's the key: the application for John and everybody else. You know what you want in a healthy culture. So so list it out. This is what I want. This is what I know that I want in a what I call a healthy culture. And then we look for that. It's doable, folks. Don't settle. Settling always sucks. There's a bumper sticker phrase. There you go. By the way, that's true in every area of your life. If you settle in your marriage, it sucks. If you settle in your parenting, it sucks. If you settle in your friendships, it sucks. If you settle in your job, it sucks. Don't settle in any area of your life because I got news for you. It will eventually suck. Why in the world would we want suck? I don't. All right. Okay, I got to get to this. Did I allow my... Okay, this is great. Here we go. I'm watching a movie last night on Netflix with my wife. I get a text from a friend. Bro, have you seen... What just happened, or did you see what just happened with Will Smith and Chris Rock? Well, of course my answer was, no, I don't even know what you're talking about. They're like, pause the movie. I said, I'm watching a movie with Stacey. He's like, pause the movie, go to YouTube or Twitter right now. So much to Stacey's irritation, I was like, babe, I, I, I gotta check this out. So pause the movie, pull up Twitter, holy freaking moly. If you somehow today watching listening show you didn't know about, I don't know how you couldn't. Bottom line is Chris Rock, comedian, makes a joke. There's the moment. We got the picture for those watching. And he makes a joke about Jada Pickett Smith. And he says, Your hair, basically, you look like you're starring in the remake of G.I. Jane, which Demi Moore, G.I. Jane 2. He takes a shot at her. Well, I don't know if Chris Rock knew it. I didn't know it. But she's got a hair condition, a skin condition of some sort, to where she's been losing her hair. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, it's, 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 oh, yikes. So, Chris Rock has now, and he makes the joke. Now, if you go watch the unedited version, which I have 271 times, Will Smith laughs at it initially. I don't know if it's a nervous laugh or it's just kind of they make fun of celebrities at these shows. And it's kind of like if you're in the front and you're a big star, you're a potential target. Whatever. He throws his head back and laughs. But simultaneously, Jada is not laughing. Jada ain't happy. Which I understand. She's been insulted. And it's very personal now. She didn't choose to cut her hair that short, apparently. It's a, it's a, it's a thing. So it's just it's awful, right? Well... 
cut away to Chris Rock, who's continuing on. And next thing you know, we see Will Smith walk up on the stage, and Will and, and and Chris Rock's like, I don't know what's going on. He kind of makes a little joke, and next thing you know, Will Smith slaps him. I mean, slaps him. Look at that picture. I mean, just cuffed him. I was like, what? All right. Obviously, in my opinion, if you ain't Will Smith, you get arrested. Meaning, if you're not a celebrity. At an award show, you get arrested for assault. So this is obviously not a good decision. And yes, I understand as a husband of almost 24 years, I also understand why Will got really pissed. I get it. But you can't do that. So quick, real quick, five things for confrontation in the office. I got to roll through this, but here it is. Uh, number one, don't slap them. <laughs> number two, Approach them privately. Don't do it in public. Number three, share your feelings. Don't judge their actions. Share how you feel. Don't go after their actions. Number four, listen to their response. Actually listen to them. And number five, discuss how you can move beyond the incident. Five quick things right there for real ugly confrontations in the workplace so that you don't go too far and that maybe it gets redeemed. All right, I got to get out of here. You matter. You have what it takes. This is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on. Thanks for listening to The Ken Coleman Show. For more, you can find the show on demand wherever you listen to podcasts and watch the show on YouTube. You can also find Ken across all social media by following at Ken Coleman.